All right. Good morning, guys. Uh, this is Miss Harris. <clears throat> Hope you're having a good Friday. Uh, I'm going to give you some notes and examples for slope. Uh, there are four general types of slope, and when you read the graphs, you read them from left to right. So the first type is positive. So if you're reading from left to right, it'd be like that. Negative is going downhill. Zero is a like flat ground like that, and undefined is a vertical line. By the way, zero, that's called horizontal line. This is called a vertical line. So a horizontal line has zero slope, an undefined line, or a vertical line has an undefined slope. Um, <clears throat> there's two ways on this lesson that you're going to be asked to find the slope of a line. The first is when given a graph on a coordinate plane, use the definition of slope and just count the rise and the run. The symbol used to represent slope is a lowercase m. All right, so the definition of slope is m equals rise over run. You probably heard that in Algebra 1. So let's look at this first example over here. Let me see if I can clear off this. All right, so um, example one, first thing you should notice is that the line is going uphill from left to right, so it's going to have a positive slope. And we're going to use the definition of slope of rise over run. And you always should work from the left point to the right point. You don't have to, but it's just best practice. So we're going to start at point B right here. All right, let me use a different pen here. We're going to start at point B, and we're going to count. We're going to count how far the line rises vertically. So we go up one, two, three, four, five, six. We have a rise of six, and it's up, so it's positive. So our rise is going to be six. All right. Now from that point at the top, we're going to count run. So from this point up here, we're going to count how far we're going to run across to get to that point A. So we're going to run right one, two. So our run is two. So your rise is six. So you put that number on top of your fraction, and your run is two. Now, we want to reduce that fraction. So if you know that six over two is three, that's fine. If it's a fraction you don't know, like let's say uh, 12 over 28, you can go alpha y equals on your calculator and type it in as a fraction, and it will reduce it for you. So our slope here is going to reduce to 3. So the slope of this line is 3. You could also check that by starting here and counting up 1, 2, 3, and over 1. That's a rise of 3, a run of 1, which is what we have because 3 is the same as 3 over 1. We generally reduce it all the way to 3. I would take both answers. Okay, let's look at example two. Example two, if you notice right off, it's going downhill from left to right, so it's going to have a negative slope. So we're going to start at the point on the left, which is up here, and we're going to rise down. Now, if you're rising down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're rising down eight, so down is going to be negative. So our rise is negative eight because it's going down. And then from that point where we stop down here at the bottom, okay, we're going to run right 8. I'm sorry, right 2, 1, 2. And so negative 8 over 2 reduces to negative 4. All right. Again, if you don't know the fraction, you can type it in as a fraction on the calculator. You can check negative 4 on the, cal on the, the graph if you go back up here at the top. And go down 4, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1, it still falls on that line. So the slope is negative 4. Okay, so you're going to have about 10 problems where you have to give the slope, rise over run, based off of a graph. Okay, please reduce the fractions. Okay, the next way you're going to be asked to find slope is when given two ordered pairs. And an order pair is where you have parentheses, an X, comma, and a Y, comma, and then another parentheses, X, comma, Y, comma. We call that X sub 1 and X sub 2, all right? And so you're going to use the formula Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So this 
please take my advice on this and label your X and Ys in this problem. So in example three, in this first ordered pair right here, all right, the X is going to be four and the Y is going to be negative three. Remember, it's always in alphabetical order, X comma Y. All right, since that's the first ordered pair, we're going to call it X sub one, Y sub one. That just means first X, first Y. The second parentheses, we have another X and Y. And because it's the second order pair, we're going to label it X sub 2, Y sub 2, which means second X, second Y. Now, a lot of people mess this formula up because they try to subtract the two numbers in the same ordered pair, okay? Or they mix up their X's and their Y's, all right? So let's look. We want to take the second X minus, I'm sorry, the second Y minus the second, pardon me, the second Y minus the first Y over the second X minus the first X. I would highly recommend you use parentheses, okay? If you use parentheses, you're less likely to make a mistake, and, and you can also type it on the calculator at one time. Now, if you've labeled it, your second Y is negative 11, and you want to subtract the first y, which is negative 3. So negative 11 minus negative 3. In the calculator, you've got to type it in as a negative 11, a minus, and then parentheses negative 3. Put everything in parentheses. You won't make mistakes. Then we're going to take the second x, which is right here, and minus the first x. So negative 2 minus 4. Now, here's what I would recommend you do. Type it all in the calculator as one big fraction. So alpha y equals, press number 1, make a fraction. In the top, do parentheses negative 11 minus parentheses negative 3. Arrow down, negative 2 minus 4. All right. Now, I don't have a calculator right now, so I'm going to do it the long way. Negative 11 minus the negative 3 is really negative 11 plus 3, which is negative 8. Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. And then that fraction reduces to positive um, 4 thirds. That's my dog whining. Pardon that. Now, but if you type it all in your calculator, you can just type it all in and you can skip this middle step. And the calculator doesn't make mistakes. Sometimes we do. All right. Example 4, you got your first x, so x sub 1 your first y, y sub 1, your second x, x sub 2, and your second y, y sub 2. So again, this is the way I would start every problem. I do parentheses minus parentheses over parentheses minus parentheses. But you got to remember, y's go on top. Okay, it's y over x. So you're going to take y2 minus y1, 10 minus 7, x2 minus x1, negative 4 minus a negative 3. Type all of that in the calculator, okay? And I'm going to do it without a calculator, and I get 3 over negative 1 because negative 4 minus a negative 3 is negative 4 plus 3, which is negative 1. But the calculator is just going to spit out the final answer, which is negative 3, okay? Okay, so I'm going to do the first problem on each practice for you. Um, by the way, both practices, practice part one and practice start part two, is due at the end of the period, so make sure you finish it and turn it into whoever's covering my class tomorrow. Um, once you get done, you need to work on mastery prep, and please be on your best behavior for the substitute. Okay, so on number one, we're going to go from point the point on the left to the point on the right. The first thing I notice is it's, it's a positive slope because it's going uphill, all right? So remember, for graphs, we're going to use the definition of slope, rise over run. Rise over run. So from this left point, we're going to rise up. We're going to just go up one unit, all right, because we only had to get, jump one time, all right? So our rise is going to be one. And then we're going to run right, one, two, three, four, five. So our run is five. 
that fraction is already excuse me already reduced if it was not you can always type it in the calculator to see if it is and you do need to reduce your your slope okay practice part two is where you're gonna find the slope when given two ordered pairs alright remember the formula for this is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and so you're gonna have parentheses minus parentheses over parentheses minus parentheses and you want to type it in your calculator just like you see it so this is x1 y1 this is x2 y2 I highly recommend you you label that and you're gonna take your second y minus your first y 9 minus 5 over your x2 minus your x1 2 minus 1 type it all in the calculator and you're gonna get 4 you need to practice typing in the calculator right now to make sure you know how to type it incorrectly okay guys so use parentheses type it in like you see it should be no problems it's just formulas today and a review from algebra 1 and geometry please do your work do it to your best ability and I will see you next week